thank you all for uh, for coming out tonight on, on relatively short notice. This is an august body, I guess you'd say, because it's comprised of uh, the uh, Chipola Indians and the Florida State Seminole groups here. So uh, both are winners, there's not any doubt about that, I can tell you that. There's a long history of winning and a relationship that's very strong. If we got some gators in here, we're glad to have you in here. Uh, we're e e e equal, equal opportunity, I can tell you that. Chipola uh, takes from the Crimson Tide from Harvard from the Gators, from Florida State, wherever we can get it. But uh, seriously, uh, we're very honored to uh, have Coach Hamilton here tonight who just walked off the uh, practice floor in Tallahassee. Uh, he's got an exciting team, a young team, and he, we're going to get to him. Uh, first of all, we have with us a, our, our former uh, President Gene Pro. Thank you, Gene, for, for being out here tonight to support your call. You've done it all your life. And um, we have uh, probably, Gene, when you're done, you're done. And more importantly, uh, I learned that a long time ago. When you're done, it's not the same. We got the new president. He's not he, Two years is, he's, he's our latest president and his uh, beautiful wife here with him. Uh, so, Jason, come up and address this crowd. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe uh, your AD and your coach afterwards, you can. Take that. Thank you, Robert. Well, good evening, everyone, and let me just say how much I appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, we're so excited to have Coach Hamilton here and uh, looking forward to hearing some words from him. Uh, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your many, many years of supporting Chipola College. Uh, athletics is important to our institution. Academics is important to our institution, and we have so much to be proud of. Recently, we have uh, so many state and national recognitions that uh, many of you have seen in the, in the paper and on TV. Uh, we were selected as the third best college in the country recently uh, by one poll. We were, our nursing program was selected as the tenth, in the top 10% in the country. This includes all colleges, all universities in the eastern United States. Uh, little institutions like Johns Hopkins were compared to us. And our nursing program was in the top 10% in the country in the eastern United States. Uh, so we're very proud of some of those accomplishments. Our automotive technology program was selected to be in the top, it's top 20 finalists this year. Our automotive technology instructor was selected as a finalist for the teacher of the year in the state of Florida. Uh, and the list just goes on and on and on and on. Uh, so we have so much to be proud of. If you haven't been on our campus recently, uh, we've got about $5 million worth of uh, infrastructure projects going on. We're doing about a $2 million renovation on our gym, on our uh, uh, dorm. Uh, we just finished about a $1.8 million renovation on our Milton Johnson Center. Uh, we have uh, new water lines going in, new sewer lines going in, a lot of stuff that's not very pretty, but we got to have it. Uh, we're the third oldest institution of the state colleges in Florida. So our infrastructure is getting very old, and we're putting a lot of those resources to work. And uh, you'll notice down by the Milton Johnson Center, we're re replacing all of the curbing, all of the sidewalks. We're getting ready to put asphalt down there. And that part of the campus, the north end of the campus, with the renovation of the tennis courts, the swimming pool, the gym, is going to be absolutely beautiful. And uh, I just want to close by saying uh, how much I appreciate all of you supporting Chipola College for so many years. And, uh, I know you're here to hear from Coach Hamilton, and, and he's going to be up in just a few minutes. But thank you for your continued support. If you're not an Appreciation Club member, uh, Robert can probably sign you up tonight. <laughs> we need your support. Uh, it takes a lot of money to run athletic programs, and the Appreciation Club has been up and running for in excess of 40 years. And through your help, millions and millions of dollars have been raised to support athletic programs at Chipola College. You have helped change the lives of many students who have gone on to Division I, to pro teams, and to have successful careers. And uh, we couldn't do it without your help. So if you want to join tonight, we can help you. Uh, but uh, we appreciate your support. At this time, I want to uh, call on uh, our new athletic director, Coach Jeff Johnson. Well, he's trying to act like he's not hurting, but uh, he's got a little, little foot injury right now. Uh, Coach Johnson has been at Chipola College for about 18 years. 
He's one of the most successful baseball coaches in the country, period. And uh, he's got a lot, of, a lot of great things and great ideas. We're very happy to have him as our athlete director. Coach Johnson. Thank you. Uh -huh. Dr. Hurst, thank you. I, in, in January this past year, I was riding out to the health center during Christmas, and he was pulling in when I was pulling out, and put his hand out, and he said, Coach, I need to ask you a question. You go to lunch with me today. I knew it was into something pretty quick then. <laughs> so we went to lunch, and he asked me to be the athletic director. You know the old saying, be careful what you ask for, be careful what you accept. Okay? So, but, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. I mean, we've, I've had a lot of fun, and you know, the short time I've been athletic director, we're trying to really build the community support back up and, and build this thing like it like it deserves to be. I mean, we've got a lot of great coaches here, a lot of great support here in this town, in this community, and we just want to make it the best we can be. And, uh, you know, thank you all for coming here. I was going to hit some of the Appreciation Club stuff, but I just want to introduce our coaches that are here right now. we got Coach Greg Franklin over here, the women's basketball coach. Uh, coach Franklin won his first national championship this past year. Uh, this is be your fourth year, right, Coach? Been in the national tournament all three years he's been here. Uh, and we expect some, some big things uh, coming up again this year. But thank you so much, Co Coach Franklin over there in the corner. Um, Coach Hendricks, I think she had to she had to run. Is Jimmy still here? They had they had soccer tonight, so uh, they were trying to pick up people from soccer and all that. And then the guy I want to introduce right now is our new men's coach, uh, Coach Brett Campbell. Coach came to us, uh, I guess, uh, when I got here in January. Uh, he got on board pretty quick thereafter. And uh, I'm really excited about him, what he's able to do in the community, uh, the maturity he brings to our program, and the experience he's going to bring to our program as well. And, and you're excited about that. And Coach Campbell, come on up, and I'll let you introduce Coach Hamilton, because he, he told me he had a couple of good things he could say there to, to take care of that, okay? Uh, but anyway, thank you, bud. All right, thanks. Coach Hamilton, you want to come up here? Leonard, I uh, talked to Joe Dean Jr. a little bit earlier today, <laughs> but he said I, I may not need to share all those stories. But uh, Leonard uh, Hamilton, it's, it's funny, one of the first times I took a job in the business many years ago, I worked for a guy named Joe Dean Jr. And the first guy he talked about was a guy named Leonard Hamilton, who I'd never met. Said, and Joe Dean Jr. was on the staff with him in Kentucky. He won a national championship in 1987. I think you guys went through those years, maybe four in final fours, but he said the best recruiter, bar none, in the, in the history of basketball. And it's funny, I called him up today and <clears throat> he was he was on his way uh, somewhere to a quick meeting and he said, hey, tell Leonard I said hello. And I still say he is the best recruiter, bar none, in the history of basketball. And, and that's huge because when you work that hard to get really good players wherever you're at, obviously that helped him move up. He, would, he played at a place called Tennessee Martin, and uh, I may have scared him the, the most he's ever been scared one time. My first year at Tennessee Martin, <clears throat> I said, Leonard, is there any chance you can come back and speak at our, at our first year basketball banquet? And he said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do that. Everybody talked about Leonard. I mean, he's a, he's a hero. He's in the Hall of Fame at, at Tennessee Martin. So I said, well, you're, uh, we're going to come pick you up. A buddy of his had, a, had an airplane. Well, little did he know he flew up commercial to uh, Memphis, and we came down and picked him up in a crop duster. <laughs> and if you talk about Leonard's eyes, <laughs> he said, what have I got myself into? But we, we survived. We actually landed in that guy's uh, farm, farm yard up there. And uh, I think we drove him back to Memphis on the way back. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want any more of that. But uh, he, he played at uh, Tennessee Martin. I, I did see where he scored 54. And, and when you're in junior college, you set a record there at Gaston. But at Tennessee Martin, he was a defensive player of the year captain. and. Uh, had a stellar career there at Tennessee Martin. He later moved on, and the, and the first uh, job I think he had was at Austin P. And I happened to go to Austin P. back in the, in the 90s. And as soon as I get there, once again, they're talking about a guy named Leonard Hamilton. This guy is unbelievable. He put Austin P. on the map. He went up and recruited a guy named Fly Williams. And I don't know if many of you know anything about Austin P. and they're, they're in the Ohio Valley Conference. But they got a cheer. Dickie Nutt coached in that league. He's, he welcomed Dickie. He was at the Southeast Missouri and knows it well. But people stand up and, and they got a cheer at Austin P. And they all stand up. Then that eight, ten thousand people stand up and say, "Let's go P." You know, everybody can stand up and just say, "Let's go P." You know, and that doesn't happen very often. So he recruited a guy named Fly Williams. Well, Fly Williams came down there, a prolific player, unbelievable, one of the 
best ever. I mean, obviously the best ever at Austin P. Put them on the map. I, they were ranked in the top ten. There's still uh, pictures there in Sports Illustrated about them. Nobody really knew about Austin P. Leonard, actually, Greg Franklin's an Austin P. graduate, by the way. I don't know if he knew that or not. But they, uh, so they, they bring the fly there. Well, all of a sudden, the cheer kind of changed. It went from open to fly, let's go pee. <laughs> so a, a, a little history there. But anyway, I know you're here to listen to Leonard. And uh, obviously, Leonard's had a great career. It, it's unbelievable. You know, people don't realize that he has three National Coach of the Year awards. And I don't know if people realize that. He has two ACC Coach of the Year awards and two Big East Coach of the Year awards. He's been at two schools in the past two decades that are primarily football schools, Miami and Florida State, and he's put them on the map. So let's welcome Leonard Hamilton. Here. <laughs> the first thing I want to say, I, I really appreciate it. You guys give me an opportunity to come over and visit this. This time of year, you know, most coaches are running around. We're a little tight right now. You know, we, we're practicing and, and we got a lot of things going. But the first thing I'm going to ask you to do, please tell people that I can smile. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I do have a little personality. All right? <laughs> it's interesting that, that, that people, they don't just have to get to know you. They watch you on TV and they, and they try to associate the image that you project on TV, you know, with who you really are. And I go through the airports and people be walking and say, oh, please smile. I mean, and, and, and it's, it's almost, and it's beginning to bother me a little bit. But it's very difficult, and I'm sure Coach, you can attest to this, to be smiling when you got 18-year-old kids running up and down the court with your paycheck in their mouth. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, not quite, it's not quite a real comfortable feeling. And, and I know, that all of you, when you were 17, 18, 19 years old, y'all were all angelic, you were perfect, <laughs> your parents had no problem with you, did exactly what you were supposed to. That's not the way it is today. Sometimes you had to put a little hit, some you had to hug them, you had to kiss them, and then once in a while you had to choke them. You know, but, but at the end of the day, but, 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 but that's brings me to a, a point while, while we're here. I, I have so much respect and appreciation for the legacy that you've been able to establish here in Chipola, in this in this community, with your school, with your your academics, and also through your athletic program. And, and many times, when, when you are in support of, of, of an athletic program, people don't realize how important that is because most of the kids that you receive that, that come to school in all sports, and in many cases even academically, you know they're the first generation students that have gone to college. And you don't realize the difference you make in, in, in the whole culture of a family. When kids come to school, maybe some of them might not, they might be good in, uh, good students, but maybe not, might not have, they might have underachieved. Or maybe you have kids who maybe have some challenges somewhere along the way. And they come to a community college because you got a little bit more of an open door policy. And, and, and they want to get a good education. But you, you really changed the whole culture of the family. I, I know when I graduated, I went to a community college. Unfortunately, I was going to join the Army. My father always told me, you know, I, had to, I didn't have any, there that, that was no doubt in my mind that I had to earn my own way to school. I think my father bought me my last shirt when I was 13 years old. And he, he made me earn everything from that point on. And, 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 and you know, obviously, the youngster growing up and, and all the other kids are getting gifts and, clothes and things from the parent, you get a little irritated as a kid because your father's making you wait for work and earn everything. He always said to me, never let anybody outwork you because whoever is judging you, they might make a mistake. So you have to be always, not only just being just good, being doing just as good as everybody else is not, is not good enough. You have to be better. And you have to not let anybody ever outwork you. He always said, give everything that you have and everything that you do. Don't ever let someone say that they, they seeing someone else working hard and giving more effort than you. And that's where I've lived my life. And but 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 the fact that he never bought me anything, he he made me earn everything. Then I realized that in order to be successful in life, you had to always be hold yourself accountable. And 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 and, and I remember as a youngster, him coming home one night. 
he had told us to cut, cut the grass, and I had uh, I had three brothers and a sister. It was eight of us living in a four room house, you know, uh, four boys and two and, and, and two bunk beds in, in one room. You know, we had no hot and cold running water. Our bathroom was on the bath porch, and I took my bath in a tin tub over in the corner. But 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 with doing that, he he he, he came in one night at three o'clock in the morning. We hadn't cut the grass, so he made us get out of bed at three o'clock in the morning. And back in those days, you didn't have lawnmowers, you had push mowers. So we had push mowers and a sling blade, and we cut the grass at 3 o'clock in the morning. But you know, you don't know what those lessons do for you. But they understand you, you understand being accountable. So when time comes to go to school, we, I didn't have any money. So uh, unfortunately for me, I, had, I thought well, the best thing to do is go join the Army. And, and then I get my education paid for when I, when I got out of the Army. And, but you know, God has always kind of ordered my steps. I've always seemed to have this angel, this hedge of protection around me in everything that I did and everything that I wanted to do and all the decisions that I made. And, uh, but, but, but life would have it. I wasn't supposed to be in the um, army. But we started, uh, uh, they hired a guy at Gaston Community College named Mr. Brooks, Coach Brooks. And, and at, as I was getting ready to enlist into the army, he started running around the community saying that we get ready to start a basketball program at Gaston Community College. First time in the history of the school they had a basketball program. And, and obviously going up to school, I played basketball and football and everything else I could do. I spent most of my time in church, but, uh, but I had an opportunity then to go to Gaston Community College. Needless did I know that would make the biggest difference in my life. But that wasn't necessarily me making that decision. That was that guardian angel that I had always looking over my shoulder and all, all in my steps. So going to Gaston Community College, you know, I had an opportunity to, you know, to play on the basketball team. And like Brent was saying, you know, fortunate for me, you know, I, I was a kid who was hungry and aggressive and, and, and wanted to make it. And I did score 54 points in one game. And so my, 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 those articles went all over the country. And I had a chance to either go stay in North Carolina and play a Division I school, or I had a chance to go to the University of Tennessee tomorrow. Now, not very many people know what I'm getting ready to tell you, so you don't have to tell everybody about this little secret. <laughs> but but I, my parents, my parents, but my mother went to the seventh grade, my father went to the ninth grade. And so I, I didn't have very much leadership and guidance at home. All I knew is that if I was going to make it, I had to get my education. And going to a community college made me change my whole life. Going to have the opportunity to go to school, when maybe I may, might have been a little bit of an underachiever, and the people at that community college did so much for me. It helped me grow from being a, a little wild, aggressive, unsophisticated uh, teenager uh, to uh, a, a guy who had some direction in his life. I remember people like you would take our team out to have dinner. You know, I had never had a broad shrimp, you know, because we had fried shrimp here once in a while, and I'll never forget this. That this guy said, you know, I'm gonna take these underprivileged kids, I'm gonna bring them to my house, I'm gonna feed them a nice steak, and I'm gonna feed them some raw shrimp. Well, we thought the shrimp was raw, okay? We <laughs> so, 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 you know, we really didn't know. And I kept telling the other players, I'm not eating that. He said, oh, okay. <laughs> but before do you, that's kind of the life that we started. And so to think where we started from, and where I am now in life because I had an opportunity to go to a community college that gave me some direction that, that people were very patient with me. And I was honored this past year. It was a tremendous honor. And, and people who know me, I'm not a person who brag. I'm very humble. And I'm very appreciative for uh, the success and the opportunities I've had in my life. But I was honored as their distinguished, um, the school was 50 years old. And I was, I was honored as their distinguished uh, alumnus of the first 50 years of their school, which was a tremendous honor, honor for me to go back and, and have a chance to speak at their graduation. And it's, it's interesting that that, uh, that 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 I thought I was going, they asked me to speak <laughs> at the commencement. So now, hey, look, I'm fired up. You know, I got to go, I got to do a good job. So I go on the internet and YouTube, I'm looking at Steve Jobs, I'm looking at Oprah Winfrey, I'm looking at all these people who have given all these eloquent speeches because I got to go in and represent you know I got to go and I got to be on it and I got to make sure that I'm there so I had six pages I am ready to give this give this uh, commencement speech 
I'm, I'm there, I'm in the hotel, and I'm writing things down, and I'm changing it, and I, I'm rehearsing it with my, my wife. So I, I get to the, the commencement ceremony, and tell me I have five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so now I'm at my community college and it's changed my life and I've scored 54 points, I'm in the history books, I'm the distinguished alumnus of, for 50 years and I'm ready, to, I'm going to give them all I got and they tell me I got five minutes. <laughs> so, so now I, I got all these pages and you know what it's like when you prepare yourself, you got to go, go talk and how am I going to condense all what I want to say in five minutes? And so, now you know how most kids are in graduation ceremonies. They want to get out and have some fun. They, they already, you know, you see them out there, they got the gowns on this, and get this over with so we can go party. You know what I mean? They are ready to go out and enjoy themselves. And what they don't want to hear is me up there running out of the mouth for 30, 40 minutes. You know what I mean? But that's what I was going to give them. That's what Oprah did. That's what Oprah did. That's what I gotta give them something that they all can remember now. And I'm trying to figure out as I'm on my way to the podium, what am I gonna say that's meaningful that these kids won't will listen to and remember from this distinguished alumnus of the first 50 years of the school. And all six pages of my stuff, and I'm trying to figure out what am I gonna do, how am I gonna do this? But I said two things. I said the first I want everybody to look at me. I don't want to come up here and niece you not remember something I said. And the first thing I say is don't ever let anybody out work. Don't ever let anybody out work. Because anytime you put in a situation where there's a challenge in front of you, the person who evaluating you, your boss, your coach, your administrator, you might make a mistake. And I said the second thing I said, you gotta have a moral compass. You gotta have a moral compass about your life where you just do what's right. You know, you do the right thing by yourself and by the people. And, and, and all I can say is that for many, many years, this community has done what's right by Chipotle. And, and now you've had change of presidents, you have changed of coaches, you have, you have a lot of things going on, you're receiving a lot, of, a lot of recognition. And I just want to encourage you not to let any other community in the United States outwork you in terms of giving the school the support that they need in order for them to be successful, to continue to keep growing and, and making a difference in young folks' lives. I mean, I, I, I know how appreciative I am that it was a community college that meant so much to me, that gave me an opportunity. And when I graduated from the community college, I had an opportunity to go to the University of Tennessee at Martin and get my undergraduate degree. And then how I got into graduate school, I do not know. But I went to Austin P, and I got my master's degree from Austin P. But what I want you to know, I was so appreciative that I wanted to reach back. So when I gra as a graduate assistant, my first year out of college, I adopted my brother Willie because I wanted him to have some direction where he can go on with life. And then after I adopted Willie and I got Willie in college, I adopted my brother Barry. And then after I adopted my brother Barry, I adopted my sister Pam. My, my mother called me one day, and my sister pulled up in the back of a police car, said she got caught shoplifting. I said, put her on the bus and said, to me. But my point is, it all started as a result of me having an opportunity to go to community college to get my education, to learn to grow up and become the young man. So what the life, the part you play with young people is, 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 is insurmountable. I can't tell you how important it is for you to continue to keep working and developing and and, and, and making the sacrifice that it takes to, 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 to uh, support the school, the president, the kids, because you, you're making the difference. There are a lot of people, a lot of young people out there like Leonard Hamilton that would not have a way, would not have an opportunity to be successful if it had not been for people, like people in this community for support. So don't take that lightly. What you do is very, very important. When you think about, <clears throat> when you really think about you know, when I graduate, I adopted my brother William, he graduates. His kids graduate. My brother John, I couldn't adopt him because he was too old by the time I got through adopting all about it, everybody else. <laughs> but his sons graduate from school. My sister Pam's kids are in college. And so it's reaching back and helping one. And in closing, I just want to encourage you, 
don't take what you do lightly. Try to get everybody in the community to do everything they can. This is very important work that you do. And, and you've accomplished so much. And the recognition you receive on a national basis is very is, is, is unbelievable. Your nursing school, your girls' basketball team, your soccer team. And, and your basketball team, nothing stays great forever. But the men's basketball team has been one of the best basketball programs in the country for a number, number of years. And there's no reason why I can't get back to do that same, uh, to, to be just as successful as it's been in the past. And, and, and you don't know the recognition as, as the successful basketball, the women's basketball team, the soccer team, the men's team around the country. People know about Chipotle. They know about this community. And you have so much to be proud of that I can't tell you. So let's, let's don't let that legacy die. More so than anything else, this, if you can just think about the husbands, the, 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 the wives, the, the, the citizens, the neighbors, uh, the, the, the great people that you have helped start in their life and, and, and how much they've meant to their families and it multiplies and it goes on and on and on because of the support that you guys give them. So in closing, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to come over and run off with my mouth. But I, 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 don't, I don't take what you guys do seriously, and I'm here. I'm glad I had opportunities to share some thoughts because I know how much it has meant to me. A little black kid from Gaston in North Carolina who had no way, who was just hard-nosed and tough and worked his butt off to have an opportunity to, to go to a community college, get my education, and move on with my life. And, 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 and I've been very fortunate, and I know I'm not, I'm not – egotistical enough to think that it was all I had to do with me. It was just my path being guarded, but also the community college people gave me so much support. And, and I told them all the stories. I delivered the mail. I was there early in the morning. And I, I, I just had so much fun it all started. And I hope that you guys can continue to keep making a difference. And these young folks' lives that you guys support, let the community college make a difference in my life. So thank you very much. Thank you.